Today I'm going to show you how to paint using colored glazes. Where traditional layering is about building up successive colors in lighter or darker shades of opaque paint, glazing is more about using translucent paint. So it's almost like colored film that you're applying one on top of the other to create sort of this illusion of depth where you can see all of the colors underneath instead of just seeing the color that's on top. This works especially well with underpainting because it's gonna preserve all of your shading and highlights that you've already done. To get started, you're gonna need some Vallejo glaze medium or a glaze medium of your choice, as well as a few colors that you wanna glaze with. Here's the full list of colors that I used, but you can use whatever colors you want that are gonna suit the miniature that you're painting. You're also going to need the usual stuff that you always need, paper towels, a mixing glass, a good brush, a not so good brush for mixing with, and ideally you're also going to want a wet palette for this technique. Now you can buy a wet palette in the stores and get something fancy like I just got, but I got it too late to make it in this video, or I can show you how to make a wet palette right now. To make a wet palette, you're going to need to get some sort of plastic container. Right here, I'm using the bottom of a cookie container, and uh, I just put a damp paper towel in the bottom of it. And then over top of that, I'm putting some parchment paper. And I'm going to spread the parchment paper out until it gets sort of damp. And there you go, you have a wet palette. You're also going to need a test model that you've already underpainted. For more details on underpainting, you can check out my previous video here, where I go through that entire process. You could, of course, do glazing over just a white primer as well, and that would probably also work, but for maximum effect, you're going to want to follow my guide or your own guide on underpainting to get uh, the full effect of glazing. Today, I'm using a squig from a squig herder set. I don't know, I got it in Loon Curse, so that's where it's from. From Age of Sigmar, Warhammer, you know what I'm talking about. We're using a squig. So this will also double as a how I paint my squigs paint guide, if you ever wanted to know how I do that. All right, let's get started. Above all else when glazing, I'm gonna ask you to be gentle, both with yourself and with the glaze medium. It's much better to put less paint on the model than to put on too much that you can't take off. With glazing, we're gonna be building up slow, successive layers. One of the things I didn't know when I first started glazing was that the results are not going to be immediate. You may have to build up anywhere between one to five to 10 layers to get the result that you're looking for, depending on the color and depending on your glaze mixture. So this is a sort of process where it rewards patience and uh, invest the time into kind of understanding how the medium works and you'll get kind of a feel for it. So making your first glaze. Today, I'm going to be mixing a glaze using Vallejo Clear Orange and Vallejo Glaze Medium. I'm just going to put a little drop down on the palette right now of some clear orange, maybe a little drop or two, and then I'm going to put a little drop or two of Vallejo Glaze Medium. Dipping my brush into my water pot, I'm going to take a little bit of water and use it to mix the glaze together until it gets to a consistency that I am kind of familiar with. So this is the sort of thing you're gonna have to probably experiment with a bit to understand the consistency that works for you. But you can kind of see on my palette the sort of consistency that we're looking for. It's kind of like not, not so watery that it's going to run back down the palette. It's gonna stick a little bit, but not so sticky that it's not thinned out. Let's talk a bit about paint theory. Now you might ask me, why are we even doing this? Why not just thin our paints with water? Well, paint is made up of basically two components and a magical third one that we're not gonna talk about. So those two components are the color stuff, which is pigment, and the gooey stuff, which is medium. 
So glaze medium is basically pure medium with I think a few other ingredients. It's a mystery. But basically what we're doing is we're just skewing the ratio of medium to pigment to be a lot more pig, a, well, no, nope. a lot more medium, a lot less pigment. So what happens when you mix paint with water is you're altering the consistency of the paint. You're making it more watery. But by mixing it with glaze medium, it's still going to be the consistency of basically uh, paint. So you can work with it a lot easier. It's not going to run around the miniature as much. It basically gives us way more control over where the pigment lands on our miniature. We can be a lot more careful about where the actual color ends up on our surface. Let's get into technique. What you're gonna to wanna to do is take a little bit of paint on your brush, not so much that it goes up to your bristles, because if you do that, you will ruin your brush. But if it happens, just, just rinse your brush out with water, it'll be fine. But anyway, you wanna take just a little bit of paint on your brush, and what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our paper towel and just gently wipe off most of it, or not most of it, but a lot of it, as you can see I'm doing. We're doing this so that the paint is not going to flood onto our miniature whenever we start painting. You'll get a feel for exactly how much paint to remove from your brush, but in general, when you're first starting out, it's better to get more paint off your brush and not flood the miniature than having the miniature get flooded with color and you need to take it all off. I find it's a lot easier to do this if your paper towel is a little bit damp, at least in one spot, so that you can easily wipe off some of the glaze. So now that we have some paint on our brush, let's apply a small amount to the top of the miniature. I'm gonna do this really carefully and you can sort of see how the paint behaves on the surface of the miniature. It's a lot different than just a paint thin with water. You can kind of see it's uh, thinner and it also kind of clings to the miniature in a slightly different way. When you're doing this, observe how the paint behaves much differently than it usually would. You can move it around on the miniature. It'll take a long time to dry, so you have a lot of time to sort of get the paint where you want it to be, rather than it just going wherever it wants. If you practice this, you can do some really fun things with where the paint ends up on your miniature. You can also see that the layers are translucent. So when we add another layer, it's just like adding another layer of clear colored film on top of the miniature. It ups the saturation. So if you want a fairly desaturated look, you can just apply a few layers of glaze. But if you want to up the saturation in certain places, you can just continue applying thin layers of glaze in those areas, and it will happen like magic. At this point in my painting demo, I realized the paint was not quite behaving how I was expecting it to. It was a bit too thin. It didn't quite have the amount of pigment that I wanted. It was at this point that I realized I was not using the same color I used the last time I painted these squigs. The color that I had used was Vallejo Clear Orange, when the color that I had intended to use was Vallejo Red Orange. This is important because Vallejo Red Orange contains less pigment than Vallejo Clear Orange. Generally, paints with less pigment are going to make better glazes. Paints with less pigment are basically darker colors. Anything closer to white is going to have more pigment in it and makes a worse glaze. So whenever we're making a glaze, we're going to want to use the darkest version of that color that we can. I learned this tip about using darker or lighter colors for glazing from Vince Venturella's Hobby Cheating series. I'm going to link the video right up here because I think he explains it a lot better than I do. So now that I've mixed up my orange-red colored glaze, which I use the same ratio as before, a one-to-one -one mixture with a little bit of water, you can see what I intended this glaze to look like. As I'm spreading it over the miniature, you can see it's a much brighter, more pigmented glaze. And this, I think, is due to it having more red, which is a darker color than orange. Regardless of the reasons, you can see that this is a much more effective glaze and kind of more close to the color that I was intending to get. So you can see that no matter how many layers I'm adding, the underpainting is still showing through. The highlights and the shadows that I applied at the underpainting stage 
are still present no matter how many layers of this orange paint that I put onto it. So this is basically the essence of glazing. It's not really any more complicated than that. A lot of learning to glaze is just understanding the way the paints work, how much glaze medium to use, how much water to use, and how to control the paint on your figure. It's going to require a lot of trial and error, and I would encourage you to not give up. When I first started learning about glazing, I kind of did give up. I thought it was too difficult and I didn't quite understand why it was a more effective way of shading than the layering technique. It seemed like it was taking too long and I didn't quite understand it. But I would encourage you to experiment and take your time with this and it will reward you in the long run. Here you can see one of the things that sometimes happens is I've put a little bit too much paint on my brush and it's flooded into some crevices on the miniature. So when this happens, don't panic, it's really easy to fix. All you need to do is clean off your brush, remove the water from your brush using your paper towel, and then go back into the miniature and just suck up the paint. It's so thin that you can usually just suck up the paint using the bristles of your brush and remove it or put it somewhere else on your miniature that you want it. I'd like to go through some other little things we can do with glazing and one of the more common things people have asked me about is blending other colors with glazes. Blending two colors together with glazing is extremely simple. In some ways you could say you're constantly going to be mixing different colors together when you're glazing especially if you have underpainting, you're basically mixing the orange together with the white underneath in a certain way. Here you can see I'm mixing up a second color using the same method as before, just a one-to-one -one mix of glaze medium and Vallejo blue-green with a little bit of water mixed in until I have a consistency that looks right to me. So same as before, I'm just gonna take a little bit of paint on my brush, remove quite a lot of it on the paper towel before carefully applying a little bit to the miniature. Because the orange color is still wet and the cyan is very translucent, you can see when I apply this, it's almost blending itself without any real effort. The colors kind of want to blend together. So the way I'm going to blend these colors together, I'm just gonna put a little bit of blue on the miniature until I'm happy with that. Then I'm going to clean off my brush, go back, get a little bit of my orange, wipe off most of it, and then apply a little bit more orange to try to blend the colors together. Then I'm gonna clean off my brush, go in, grab a little bit more cyan paint, remove a lot of it, apply a little bit more to the miniature, clean off my brush again, and then I'm going to use the brush without any paint on it to just mix the colors together a little bit. So this is one of the fun things you can do with glazing, is you can just kind of go back and forth on your miniature, go back and forth to your palette and your miniature, and just add little bits of color here and there, and then use your brush without any paint on it to kind of mix them together in the configuration that you want. Because it'll take a while for the paint to dry, you have a lot of time to sort of decide exactly where the final pigment is going to land or how you blend the colors together. It's really up to you. There's so many ways you can experiment with glazing and so much you can do with this technique. It's a very different way of painting, very different than sort of a layering technique. The paint is always going to be kind of moving around, always able to be changed. Uh, it's a very active way of painting and it kind of can keep you really engaged with the miniature. I find it much more exciting than just applying a base coat, a shade, and then layering up to a highlight. I think this can be a really fun way of painting that keeps you engaged with multiple different colors at a time, and I'm just really a big fan of it. So we can keep going with this for as long as we like. The more coats of paint and color that we add to the miniature, the more saturated it's going to become and the more bright the colors will be. If you want a more desaturated look, you don't have to use that many layers of glazing, and you can just have a less saturated miniature.
Once you've added a bunch of layers to your miniature, you might notice that your underpainting highlights are starting to get a bit dim and aren't standing out as much. So what you might want to do is add some new highlights on top of the existing ones to help bring them out. There's a few ways you can do this, but before we go any further, I'm going to create a mixture of a one-to-one -one glaze medium and Vallejo pale sand on my palette with a little bit of water mixed in just to help it flow. I'm going to take a small amount of paint on my brush, wipe off most of it, and then go in on my miniature and just pick out a few of the raised areas that I feel like could use a little bit more highlights. As always, we're using our underpainting as a guide. We're just going to use this pale sand to take it a little bit further. You might think that I'm putting a little bit too much white on the miniature, um, and that these highlights don't look natural. Well, just wait a second and I'll show you what I'm going to do. We're going to pick out any areas of the miniature that we feel like could use a nice edge highlight, and then we're going to let them dry while we work on other parts of the miniature. Once they are dry, we're going to run an orange glaze over the areas, and you can see that it's going to tint all of those pure white areas to make them just a very bright orange. The nice thing about achieving highlights this way, instead of mixing up a glaze in a brighter color, is, I mean, as we said before, glazes don't work very well in lighter colors, but also it's just saving you time because you're only really working with a few colors at a time. If you were doing a layering technique, you would probably have to mix up several colors of increasingly brighter orange and yellow, but in this case, we're preserving the initial orange color and just adding the highlights underneath. You can go back and forth with this as, as many times as you want, adding bits of white, glazing over orange, adding more white, glazing over orange, and in each case it's going to make the figure a little bit brighter. Those highlights are going to stand out a little bit more. The second way of adding highlights is very similar to how we mixed the cyan and the orange together before. You can see here I'm using my brush to take a little bit of pale sand and mix it in with some existing wet orange on the miniature. By doing this, I'm able to kind of use my brush to blend the pale sand in with the orange in kind of a wet blending way, much like we did with the cyan. So those are the two ways that I would do highlights, either through kind of a wet blending the two colors together, or by putting the pale sand down first and then applying an orange glaze on top. This will work for almost any color that you try to use a glaze with. At this point in painting my squig, I decided it might be fun to add in a third color. So I mixed up a little bit of Vallejo Vermilion and Glaze Medium in a one-to-one -one mixture, added a bit of water, and as usual, removing most of the color on the paper towel, I added a little bit of Vermilion to just the top of the miniature. One of the cool things about using a color like red and orange together is they're already so similar that they're very easy to blend together and add successive layers of. So sometimes I like to do this when I have a color, I will just use the color next to it on the color wheel to add some interesting variety or highlights. So you can see here I'm just blending in a little bit of glaze of red in the same way that I glazed on some blue before but this time I'm doing it over top of the existing orange color. It's almost just like adding some extra life, extra variety to the miniature. And I'm not using very much. You can see I'm just adding a little coat of it on the top, removing, color from my, removing the paint from my brush, and then just going back in and blending it together with the existing orange. After letting the first coat dry a bit, I'm gonna add a second coat just to sort of brighten up the top of the miniature and you can see it adds kind of a nice richness to the orange. This is one of the fun things about glazing is you can just kind of get off track, add in an extra color, kind of just experiment as much as you want. There's very few things about glazing that are permanent and you can kind of just add or remove small bits of color as you see fit. The final thing I'd like to show you is how to add a little bit of additional shading to your miniatures. 
I often find that the underpainting phase has added more than enough shading for larger units that I'm painting, but sometimes I like to add just a little bit extra and it's almost no effort, so you might as well add a little bit more. One of the things that works really well in combination with glazing are Citadel shades. In our last video on underpainting, we talked about Nuln Oil, which is one of those shades, but actually these paints come in all kinds of colors, and we're going to use two more of them today. The first shade we're going to use is Reichlin Flesh Shade, which is a very dark orange color. You can see I'm just taking a tiny bit of it on my brush, and I'm going to apply it to the most recessed areas and places where there is already shading, but I just want to add a little bit of a punch to it. Because Citadel shades are already translucent, they tend to work really well in combination with glazes. And you can get some really cool effects if the paint on your miniature is still wet, which often it still is if we're glazing. So I'm just going to go all over the miniature and just add a little bit of Reichlin Flesh Shade to a lot of the orange areas. After we're done with the Reichlin Flesh Shade, I'm going to apply just a very, very small amount of Beal Tan Green to some of the cyan parts of the miniature. The reason I've chosen to use Beal Tan Green instead of a more blue shade, like whatever the blue one's called, is because sometimes I just want to add a little bit more spice to the miniature, and using a blue shade would kind of make the cyan feel more like blue, when I want to preserve and kind of highlight some of those green elements. So by using this, I'm just kind of having fun, honestly, and I feel like it really helps that the cyan stand out. Once again, I'm applying this very sparingly, and I'm just adding it to the very most recessed parts on the bottom of the miniature. So that's pretty much it. Those are all of the glazing techniques I can think of, aside from airbrush glazing, which I think deserves its own video. If you're curious how I went and finished up this squig after all these techniques I've showed you, all I did was add another coat of the orange glaze to tie everything together, and then I took some pale sand and just highlighted things like the horn, the teeth, and the claws. But that doesn't have to be where you stop. On your miniature, you could keep going, adding more colors, more shades, more highlights. The best thing about glazing is you can just keep going for as long as you want. If you're doing something that you want to enter into a competition, you could just continuously add more refinements using glazing. And by doing this, you're not really adding much thickness of paint, so the details are still gonna show through. One thing I will mention about airbrush glazing is that it can be significantly faster than this process if you're doing an entire unit of miniatures. Like, a lot faster. So if you are considering doing this by hand or doing it with an airbrush, if you do have an airbrush, you might want to block in some of the main colors first that way, and then go in by hand and add some extra glazes. I hope you enjoyed my video, and if there was anything that was unclear, or if you have any further comments or questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer as many of them as I can. If you want to see my daily painting updates, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at Dana underscore Howell. I hope you found this video useful, and thank you for watching.